I'm learning so much about myself. That's a part that I never knew. God. Um, and I know I need a lot more, but um, I, I never trusted. I mean, it is me. I get. I couldn't trust myself, so I couldn't trust you. I'll always love you, but I can't be with you. Are you done? Because I've been sitting around the corner from your house from the second I clocked out. I don't give a f of this. You're f up. What people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. So, this is welcome back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, we we're talking about Liz and Big Ed because there's a lot of drama going on, and part two of the tell all came out, and it was absolutely busting my dudes. That's how I feel about it. Honestly, I'd like to give a shout out to TLC, my second favorite company besides Joe's Barbecue Foot Massage. Joe's Barbecue Foot Massage. Massage. Now let's talk about the big man himself, Big Ed. Easily one of the most manipulating people I've ever seen in my entire life. I hate how he gaslights Liz and then tries to build her up and say things like, I'm in love with you and what we had was so special. Yet he flirts with literally any girl with the vagina. He'll flirt with her. Giggity, giggity, giggity. He is incredibly toxic. And here's the thing with this. There's a certain way to go about it. Like if you're a toxic dude and you're a bachelor or whatever, just be honest about it. Be like, yeah, let's, you know, have an open relationship. Let's see other people. I don't know why guys do this when they want to manipulate a girl and try to tell her, oh, you're the love of my life and we're going to be together forever. And then they're sending other girls. In our last episode covering Big Ed, we covered the fact that he broke up with Liz and after two days went to Las Vegas to send sugar babies, strippers, prostitutes, and actually offered to eat a girl out for $20. That's right. He gave the girl $50 tip and asked for 30 back. Bruh. So not only is he an incredibly manipulating person, he is also very cheap. And those two combinations together are just so revolting to me. Before we start, if you want to order a cameo from your wet sock, I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. Now that we got the shameless self-promotion out of the way, let's get started reviewing the single life tell-all part two because it is juicy. Let's get into it. Also, you guys have a big announcement. It was recently my birthday and I went home to Las Vegas to see my friends and family and saw my dad, Nicolas Cage, of course. But here's the big news, you guys. I got lunch with David Murphy from Nine Day Fiance. In the past, I've called him Overlord Simp, but we have buried the hatchet and I know I did flirt with this girl Lana, but oh, we buried the hatchet on that too, and we've all become really good friends. Me and David are like best friends. Do you know what it is? I'll be real with you guys. David is actually a really nice guy. We had a lovely conversation and we will definitely be making videos together in the future, which I'm really excited about. Friends, Romans, wet socks, lend me your ears. I know that everybody doesn't like Big Ed right now, but you know who Big Ed's enemy is? David Murphy from Nine Day Fiance because they had an explosive argument during their tell-all for their first season when Ed was with Rose. David was with Lana because Ed was really threatened because David's segment actually became the most interesting one and stole a lot of Ed's limelight. So he was really butthurt about that because we know he likes attention. So he started to hate David and then they went back and forth on the tell-all. Wake up, wake up. You think, come well, on. You think I don't know her for eight years? And they genuinely don't like each other. So in a roundabout way, what I'm saying is the enemy of our enemy is our friend. So therefore we made an alliance with David. In a roundabout way, we're kind of like Gondor from Lord of the Rings. We're fighting the orcs right now, which represent Big Ed. And then David is Rohan and he's riding to our aid. He's a little bit older, so he's going at his own pace, but he will eventually arrive to aid and we will defeat Big Ed together. Also, I promised Amira I would give her a shout out because she actually sent me a viral clip that went around to Big Ed from the tell-all before I actually watched the tell-all. The post is by the Instagrammer, you're so lazy. Let's take a look at it right now. So I I just arrived in LA. I'm gonna go jerk off in a cup. I'm excited. Yeah. What? My doctor told me um, no heavy lifting, so when I jerk off, I'm gonna use both my hands. I'm worn out. What? Oh my God. But I got this thing done. I got it. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Way to ruin my day. A little vlog of Big Ed jerking off and freezing his sperm before he's vasectomy. No, God, please, no! The only positive thing I can say about Ed is I've never seen someone purposely embarrass themselves to this magnitude before. Like, he must have thick skin, but I, at the same time, I feel like he doesn't because he seems like he really cares what people think about him. So he is kind of like a conundrum because he's willing to do the most cringe things ever, but I think he's just like that. Like, everybody I've talked to about Big Ed that has met Big Ed, has said that he's just like that. So I don't think it's an act. I think he's just genuinely super cringe. Now let's take a look at that moment in the single life tell all when Sean, the bias host for TLC that should be replaced by your wet sock, brings up the point to where Ed actually thought about proposing to Liz. And they show that clip of when Ed's on the beach and he tells that to the producer that he already bought the ring for Liz. Let's roll the clip. And I want to ask you to move in. That's another fast move. 
Real quick, I love that for the buildup in the scene that I'm referencing. Ed says that he wants his home to be our home, yet on the tell-all, she wasn't in control of what pictures of her and her daughter could go where and what pictures she could actually place of her and her daughter because Ed is such a control freak. And then when Liz would literally tell him that she has a problem with this and she wants to select the pictures of her and her daughter, Ed would say that, I'm a photographer, I have a better eye for these things than you do. I don't feel like I'm moving too fast at all. I want to spend the rest of my life with Liz. I have the ring picked out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you going to propose right now? Not right now. I want her to move in, and then when it feels right, then I'm a, I want to make my move. I want to propose. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Didn't really end up that way, huh? Didn't end up proposing, ended up breaking up with her, and then within two days going out to Las Vegas to send other girls. No <laughs> nice. Not exactly the behavior you would expect from someone that's 56 years old and is thinking about proposing to a girl that he said he's in love with. And then two days after, like the immediate looking for a rebound, I just feel like you're not genuinely in love with somebody, but you still say things like, I'm in love with you and tell girls that you love them. And I find that incredibly tough. Like I would rather have somebody be a complete then say things like I love you and then have the girl let their guard down and then use that to manipulate them and then absolutely break their heart and go and send other girls. And then Ed's excuse is I'm going to therapy. I'm working on myself. You know how many people I know that go to therapy and suck? But honestly, what makes me even more mad is that Toxic Humpty Dumpty has the nerve to wear an Italy jacket. Take that jacket off. I'm actually Northern Italian. You need to stop disrespecting my people. Did you know that Ed was going to propose? Um. Yes and no, like there's times when he would say so and then we just, I don't know. Yes and no. It, watching that made you really emotional. What are you thinking right now? Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. I think it's even worse that he hinted to Liz that he was going to propose. It makes it hurt that much more when that person leaves. Like, I just don't know why he does. He seems like the kind of person to where he wants a girl to be wrapped around his finger and he wants to fill her head with all these lies, but it's just because he wants someone to look at him. And I don't know if this stems from his physical impairment and then never having girls really, you know, like him. And then all of a sudden he gets the fame and he doesn't know how to handle it. Like, I don't know what this stems from, but he really needs to work on this behavior because it's not okay to just manipulate someone and want them to be infatuated with you. And then the minute you guys are done, you find a reason to break up, you break up with the girl, and then you go and start sending other girls right away. I just feel like that's not a way to handle it. Wanted us to be like, be all over each other's shit so we can, so we could get through anything. And, and, and I, I have things I'm working on in therapy, which is awesome. It's so awesome. It's so awesome to work on myself in therapy. Hey, Ed, you should say therapy more. Actually, you should wear a shirt that says Big Ed and then says therapy under it because I've never heard someone bring up the fact that they have a therapist more in my entire life. Like you just started therapy. You've only been working on yourself for a brief amount of time. And from when the show started, how you painted the picture, like you've already changed from how you were when you were toxic with Rosemary Vega. I'm learning so much about myself. That's that I never knew, God. Um, and I know I need a lot more, but I, I never trusted. I mean, it is me. I could, I couldn't trust myself, so I couldn't trust you. I couldn't trust myself, so I couldn't trust you. What does that even mean? That sounds like some therapist mumbo jumbo. No, dude, when it comes down to it, you're an attention whore. You really enjoy when girls give you attention because you've never had that in your life because you were a failure as a father, as a business owner, as a husband. You failed your entire life, right? In literally every single category. All of a sudden, because of your physical impairment, you're very interesting. They put you on TLC. You act really toxic with Rosemary Vega and you become like the star of the show. And I get that. Everyone gets that. That's literally the facts. That's what happened. So now that you have all the fame in the world, you want to send other girls and you want to be a bachelor and you want to use fame to pick up chicks. Hey dude, I get it. Everybody understands, but you need to be real about that fact and not manipulate this girl and tell her things like you want a relationship and everything like that when you don't. You don't want a relationship. And I'm sure TLC will give you a spinoff where you can just go on dates and be toxic and use girls and they'll use you back because they want fame and they want you to spend money on them. So it's a mutual user relationship, but I think that that's what you're honest chasing I told my daughter I'm gonna have Liz come in, move in she goes why so I can learn to trust her and then Tiffany's like Ed that's the opposite you should not want her to move in because you trust her and again this is issues about me that that have held me back from finding love 
in. Yeah, first of all, Ed, I wouldn't go to your daughter Tiffany for any advice. She's a very immature person, and we can see that by how she takes out her daddy issues on every single girl that you're talking to. For your second point about the whole, oh, it's not you, it's me, I need to work on myself. Why don't you work on yourself before you enter a relationship? Like, you want to use that as an excuse now after all the damage you've done to this girl, but that's so convenient for you that you would try to pull that card out right now. As for your third point, these are the issues about me that have held me back from finding love. No, you found love. You actually found a girl that actually loves you, which is Liz, and you still managed to mess it up because you're selfish and you want to go and send other girls. Just be honest about it. I don't know. I just, I didn't listen. I just didn't. I heard, I heard boyfriend material and I just, you know, freaking went for it. And, and I didn't expect to fall for you, man. If you actually love a girl, you wouldn't call her man. You friend zoned this girl from the get go. You used her for sex to go on the show again and be toxic. That's literally what happened. Everyone can see that. I've never called somebody that I loved. <sighs> Next thing you know, Sean asks if there's a future for both Liz and Ed, and this is what Liz has to say about that. I've missed Ed a lot this last month. Oh. Yo, Vanessa, real talk. I'm gonna let that one slide because we're friends, but if you ever ought anything cute Liz says about Ed again, we are gonna stop being friends because they are not cute and they will never be a cute couple ever, and anyone that says differently is in denial. As far as the future, we were talking about it earlier. Mm-hmm. I still love him. What? Bitch, why? Because I genuinely don't understand why or how she could love this thing, but she does. And it's the weirdest thing ever. I still want to be with him, but he's pushed me away so many times that when we were talking earlier, I told him, like, if we were to give it a fair chance, it has to be a fair chance. A hospital is a hospital. Water is wet. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for bringing a lot of uh, incredible insight to this conversation. You have an immense vocabulary. I'm very proud of you. Why don't you stop dating toxic dudes? Liz, I don't mean to talk trash to you, but I kind of do. You're already two kids deep and you made Quasimodo, or at least the evil version of Quasimodo, freeze his sperm. You want his seed inside? You want to have a third kid with evil Quasimodo? Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Liz, off the cuff, let's have a little chat really quick, all right? It's just us girls talking here, right? So you let evil Humpty Dumpty enter you, aka the penguin from Batman. Man, you're planning on having children with this Bruh. guy? What? You know who would have a huge problem with this is Charles Darwin. You know, natural selection and everything, picking the best of each species to mate. And I actually agree with Darwinism. I feel like you need to look at someone's genetics and their family tree when you're choosing to breed with somebody. It does play a factor. Like, do I want pretty kids? Yeah, I do. Am I going to look at someone's family tree and see if the family's pretty in order to breed with that person? Yeah, I am. Do I want to target someone that has a lot of height so that my kid can go to the league? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I do that? You know who executed everything I just said is Gronk's parents and Chris Hemsworth's parents. They did a phenomenal job. Way to go. You got a bunch of studs. At the same time, I know someone's getting heated and triggered and wants to write down some. Listen, I'm not saying personality and all that other mumbo jumbo doesn't matter. What I am saying is that genes definitely play a factor, especially if you're thinking about breeding with someone. And for Liz to want to breed with Ed is like the dumbest thing ever in my opinion. Like you actually deserve each other. I'm not even kidding. Liz, I lost so much respect for you. I would want to go to therapy together, cutting out our drinking. Um, you said that um, you felt like you were a guinea pig for his love life. What did you mean by that? Um, um how many times are they going to say, um, um, why do you guys have all these people on TV? They can't even speak properly. Hey guys, um, check out my new merch. Um, it slaps. Um, yeah, I feel like I am the stepping stone for him realizing that he needs to get his shit together. And so the drinking thing is incredibly ironic because every single time Liz has come over for a date, Ed has opened up a bottle of wine. He makes it a point to always have drinks in front of them. So I'm curious to see if Liz actually likes him sober. They're going to cut out drinking and that's like, oh, that's going to save the relationship. No, it's not. There's still a bunch of issues. Ed likes attention. He wants to flirt and send every other girl but Liz. Facts. Ed, are you willing to give your relationship with Liz another try? Um, I kind of went into this because I, I knew not everything about Liz's life, but I knew enough that um, okay, right away, girls, respect yourself. If a guy hesitates or says, um, when someone asks a question, do you want to be in a relationship with this person, yes or no? If they don't hit you with an immediate yes, you're gone, okay? You need to respect yourselves, ladies. Liz, you need to work on this because I can tell right away you don't respect yourself from the way that Ed has treated you and he's been incredibly toxic. I feel like it's weird for Liz because she got out of toxic with the relationship. So why don't you do yourself a favor, learn to respect yourself, think about your children, and look for a suitor that actually is going to be there. 
there. Hey guys, I take no pleasure in being brutally honest, but at the same time, if this was Spartan society, they would all be discarded. My daughter made me a list. What do you like about Liz and, you know, and what, what, what frustrates you? And, and the frustration list was like 20, and what I liked her about her was like three, including Riley. Oh. Um, <laughs> what? You only liked three things about Liz and you didn't like 20 things about her? You have such a big head. Are you kidding? And you look like that and you sound like, like, I can't even believe the nerve of this guy. This is literally the definition of when you give an ugly guy a chance. All of a sudden he treats you bad. He wants to bring you down to uh, his level and tries to undermine you and make you feel bad about yourself. Are you kidding me? There's 20 things wrong about Liz and there's only three things that you like. You know what's especially weird about the way Ed phrased this is that he was so cowardly calculating about his approach with Liz because he literally would go to her place of work and ask her out on the spot and she couldn't really say no there were cameras there and it was one of those things to where you stalked this girl at her place of work and you learned everything about her and then all of a sudden you like went for the attack when you knew it was safe she was going to say yes and it'd be an easy catch for you to manipulate this girl and send this girl because you knew she was vulnerable and weak because she got out of a toxic relationship she let her guard down she opened up to you it's such a pussy way to hit on girls. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments, but for me personally, I want to find a girl that are strongest. I'm not looking for a girl that's weak and vulnerable that I can manipulate. I want someone that's strong, independent, doing her own thing, doesn't actually need me in her life. I find that wildly attractive is when a girl's on top of her shit, she's doing her own thing, she doesn't need a man in her life. I don't want a codependent person. I've never wanted a codependent person. And for Ed, it's the exact opposite. These were things that I didn't like about myself, that I didn't, like I thought, you know, you had all the problems and all the issues. Could you guys for one second imagine looking like Big Ed and being a cringe little sex tourist and actually being one of the most hated people to ever be on reality TV of all time? Despite that, you're gonna big tell me, Big Ed, that she has all the problems and you don't have the problems? Oh, for sure, bet, bro. Why don't you tell us another story about how you used to work at Grand Toritos and you made tuna tatas and you got this big half a million dollar contract for an architecture firm you worked for in San Diego, but the only problem with that is a half a million dollars isn't a big project or even a big budget for an architecture firm in San Diego. So guess what? You're obviously lying and everyone with a brain knows that. Oh, clap it up for us, guys. I have, if not as many, but more issues about me that I have never looked at. I mean, I was the one that broke up with you like seven times. You never broke up with me. You never stopped trying. I was always the one that, that kicked you out. Yo, Ed, stop fake crying. You're the one that kicked her out. You just said that. If anyone deserves to cry about it, it's Liz, and she's very composed right now talking to you. So you don't need to hit us with the fake crocodile tears, man. I can give it another shot, and then in two days, with people in his ear, he can pretty much just tell me it's not worth it. And because he's done that to me so many times. Liz brings up a good point here that Ed overshares with his sphere of influence and they give him advice. His sphere of influence is his toxic daughter, Tiffany, that's incredibly rude and has immense daddy issues. It's also his mother that has raised a complete narcissist. So clearly she did a very bad job. So when you overshare with your family members and it's your daughter and your mother and that's your sphere of influence, of course they don't like Liz because they think that no one is good enough for you and you're up here and every other girl you talk to is down here but it's actually not the truth and it's the reverse. I don't think that Liz has, like, she's not the problem in their relationship at all. Like, she has you, tried. How can she you has say not... that? How can you be because, so one-sided? Because it takes I two can people see that. Like, make a I can tell that for many things. It's one like... person to have sex with a sugar baby. Oh, Colty, let's go. I love that. I'm just going to throw this out there. I feel like, dude, we could play Assassin's Creed Odyssey together from the way that he's been going at Ed the entire tell-all. Respect. Now, once again, I'm of the mindset where the enemy of my enemy is my friend, not my enemy. So that's why I said that. But listen, for Colt, I'm definitely going to rag on him too. I'm going to make a whole video ragging on Colt and Vanessa too. Okay, because that's what I do. I roast all my friends. Now, that being the case, Colt has definitely been throwing a lot of vicious one-liners Ed's way, and you can see that they get under Ed's skin, and he reacts, and he gets so little pissy and mad. You, why would you say that to me? I love how he got so mad and triggered at Fernanda saying that it was one-sided, and you're the reason why it didn't work out. You're the problem. I just don't think that he is ready for a serious relationship, and he's totally, he's just saying that because he wants to be pressured by that, but he's not actually acting. Facts, Fernanda, let's go, okay? I know you're with that boxer dude right now, 
But here's the thing. I'm definitely better than that kid, and I would definitely beat him in a boxing match. Let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments below. Uh, biggest arms in Honolulu, right? No, but seriously, I'm down to be friends with Fernanda. She's actually not my type. I'm actually talking to a couple other cast members on the show right now. Uh, Mira, uh, Andrew's a loser. <laughs> when you get bored or whatever, you gotta go get attention from sugar babies. Pretty girls come up to you. Hey, big guy, take a picture. Can you give that up for her? Ladies and gentlemen, Colty is positively on fire. Everything he says is big facts. It's exactly like I said. Ed likes the attention. He's never had it before in his life. And he's not willing to give that up for Liz. That's just the bottom line. Yo, what's all dudes? It's actually the next day. So I went on a date last night, which is why I'm filming the next day. So let's carry on reviewing and roasting Big Ed. Real quick, I would like to say that because it was my birthday, I went on a date yesterday. She got me a pair of sunglasses. I'm going to show you guys the glasses. And also for that point, I just want to say the other girls that I'm talking to, Amira, Stephanie, Brittany, you guys didn't give me anything for my birthday. And I'm very mad at you but this girl did look at these do these look fire on me or do these look fire on me comment below what you guys think about the new shades i actually really like these a lot and i think that they're really classy i don't know if i saw me on the beach wearing these shades it's like ah right next thing you know you guys fernanda drops an absolute bombshell on everybody and that's the fact that behind the scenes three hours earlier before they started filming the tell-all ed came up to her and asked her about her roommate for her roommate's number if she would be interested in him because fernanda i guess has a fire good looking roommate and big ed is trying to big slide in literally everybody's dms if you have a vahina he's into it he came up to me behind the scenes and he told me to say hi to my roommate and that she's really pretty oh shit Sneaky things like that that to myself don't make sense in what he's t telling you right now. Oh, what can I say? Big Ed got big busted, ladies and gentlemen. We saw this coming from a mile away. Big Ed's the kind of dude to where he's going to whisper a bunch of sweet nothings in a girl's ear, and he's going to say whatever he can do to slide in those pants, no matter what it is, no matter how toxic it is. If he has to say, I'm in love with you, he's going to say, I'm in love with you. But what that really means is, I want to sleep with you tonight. Because he would say that to your mom, he would say that to your cousin, he would say that to anybody with the vagina, and everybody knows that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to try to work things out with her, but if it doesn't work out, <laughs> then I want to keep my yeah. like you know I'm just being like honest that's literally just happened a few hours ago it's really weird that Big Ed thinks he's Jack Harlow or something because he thinks he has options and he always wants to keep those options open even when he says things like hey Liz I'm trying to work things out with you I really love you I have so much uh, remorse for what I did to you and I'll never hurt you again Buddy, three hours ago, you were asking about Fernanda's roommate and you wanted to sleep with her too. This guy just wants to sleep with everybody. And then I think the funniest part is he still says stuff like, How can you say that? It takes two to tango. There's two people in a relationship. How come no one's on my side? I don't know, man. Maybe you should fake cry more. <laughs> Fernanda, like Salt Bay, wants to put that salt on Big Ed's wound. And she goes on to say that her roommate, by the way, is 26. Two years younger than Liz. And you can see Big Ed's eyes are big popping out of his head. And he's like... Oh my God, I got caught. I think this is wildly entertaining, ladies and gentlemen. This is probably one of the best tell-alls, if not the best tell-all that I have seen from TLC. Once again, hats off. You guys are my second favorite company. You guys are always gonna be there because Joe's Barbecue Foot Massage is fire. If it wasn't my first, you guys would be number one. Liz, uh, what, what is your reaction to that? I know that he loves me and I'm not, I'm not saying that that was okay, but He's single right now. Liz, honey, take a nap and learn how to respect yourself. Are you trolling right now or are you trolling? How much did they pay you to say this? Hey, you beautiful people. Let's do a fun activity in the comment section right now. Why don't you comment below how much you think they're paying Liz? Let's have fun with it. Uh, no crazy numbers. Let's stick to realistic numbers. Also, my dude, stay until the end of this video because we're going to be exposing the recent phone conversation between Ed and Liz that was exposed and it is really juicy and you can see how Ed is in real life and he's actually way meaner to her in real life than he was on the tell-all and actually way more manipulative and toxic than we ever could have believed. So I think you want to have sex with her roommate. And okay. that's fine. Go ahead, have fun. But don't ask Liz to stay and, like, wait for you or something. Okay, dude. Yeah, who, who here wants to do an over and under that you guys won't last six months. Oh! Wow, Ed, way to deflect. Colt was bringing up a good point about the way that you're acting very toxic, and instead of agreeing or owning up to you being a toxic person, you instead want to make it over and under that Colt and Vanessa aren't going to last six months. You know what? I'll take you up on that. I'll double down. I'm willing to put 10000 on that because you know what? At the end of the day, Colt and Vanessa, I do think that they're actually best friends, and I think that they're going to work out. Now, am I saying that because we're friends now and they joined the Your Wet Sock Coalition against Big Ed? Probably. Wow. I'll put a hundred bucks. Why would you put 
That's the difference, ladies and gentlemen. Your wet sock puts down 10,000 and Big Ed puts down 100. Not so big anymore, are we, kid? Also, would never pay a girl 20 bucks to eat her out. You're trolling. Like, I have to pay girls to have sex or eat girls out. <laughs> Put it because, on them. We're talking about, about no, I'll tell you why. Because I just, he's I just wait he, months he's been idiot. such a rude. Don't know anything. He's been such a rude belligerent. I love that response. That's some shit I would say. I'm surprised Vanessa didn't look over and like, yo, you're gonna wait seven months and then break up with me. Like, what do you mean by that? Person to me all day, wow. and it's who insulted me, it's, who, who body shamed me, who that. constantly passive aggressive, who constantly gaslights. Yes, I will say, Ed is a gaslighter. Everybody love everybody. This is why we can't have nice things. Another sus thing Ed said during the tell-all was that he never liked sports, and when the men watch football, he likes to stay in the kitchen and talk about relationships with girls. My question is, you talk about relationships so much, why are you so shitty at them? Also, of course the women have to be in the kitchen, Ed. Real original, right, ladies? Also, I have girlfriends that watch football, and the last thing I'll say is, I'm sure it's triggering to watch football when you're Big Ed because he's shaped like a football, so he's like, oh my god, that's my family. Something is wrong with you psychologically. Look at you, Ed. You think I'm Crazy. Hey, listen, listen. My therapist said that I'm mean because of past trauma and the fact that I have a fat, juicy ass. Can I speak? This is the first time in my life, Fernanda, that I've ever been in therapy. Oh, and it's because. Oh! oh God, Say therapy one more time, you little. F Say it one more time. I'm getting so triggered right now. I'm about to put my AirPods in and go to the gym, or I'm gonna go hop on League of Legends and rip some bad words because you're actually making me mad. You're incredibly toxic. You keep saying stuff like, I'm going to therapy. Help mention your therapist more. Why don't you get a tattoo of your therapist on your other leg? One, we both know we drink too much, so no more alcohol. Two, she's going to church. I wanna go to church. I need spirituality because I know we won't be able to do this on our own. And I forgot my third point. Right. I have three points. Names two forgets a third point. This guy's really on top of it. He really prepared for this uh, apology speech to Liz. Also, honest to God, Heavenly Father, I would just like to say that Big Ed and organized religion is a terrible idea. He's just going to use that as another tool to manipulate Liz. I already know that. And we just fall back into our conversation and everything. Yeah, like, like that, all day so. today, you were chit chatting yeah. and talking and laughing together. But, yeah, I, I am willing. If you're willing to go get some therapy together and see. Stop the cap, Liz. There's no way this girl is this easy to manipulate. I can't even believe it. After two failed marriages and children, you're not even thinking about your children at this point. Like you're setting yourself up for failure. And at this point, it's like everything that's bad that happens to Liz, she deserves it. She's putting herself in the situation. I have zero respect for this girl. If anyone has respect for this girl, they shouldn't because you're doing this to yourself. You're playing yourself. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Ed, Ed, yes or no? You want to give it another shot or no? The only thing that gives me pause. Liz, you're really about to die on this hell. This guy really just turned around with his whole body and paused and didn't say yes right away that he wants to be with you. Like, what else do you want to know? Like, what else is a more telling thing when the toxic one actually hesitates to get back together with you? And they're the one that f***ed it up. Is the fact that it, it yes we, no. we're not going to be able to figure out our shit in three sessions. How about yes or I no? I think it's enough to see if we can try to communicate. Then suddenly she's not your hoe, no mo. I think what's really happening here is Big Ed got put on the big spot and he does want to publicly announce and make a promise to the entire world that he is going to do three therapy sessions with Liz because after the tell-all, he was planning on going and sending other girls. When I love you, Liz, I want... I'm, God, okay, I'm dead. Do, do we have a, do we have a muzzle? How can you love her? Do we have a muzzle? 10 minutes before be like, hey, you got, your friend's hot. Can I get her number? Honestly, it's so one-sided. I love how Colt is absolutely getting in Big Ed's head and not the other way around. He's getting so under his skin. And this is incredibly hilarious because that's a question on everybody's mind. How is that love? You think it's love to break up with somebody and then go immediately to Las Vegas to send other girls? And I mean, when she walked in here, it just, the minute I, yeah, the minute she started talking, I'm like, I'm screwed because I'm in love. Okay. This is actually hilarious, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, we have the footage. We've actually seen that scene and that's not what happened, Ed. You didn't all of a sudden freeze and it wasn't like your breath was taken away and you saw the love of your life enter the room. You were very disgusted that she walked in the room and you said, oh my God, and looked away. Classic manipulator tactic. He also seems like the kind of person that implements false memories. Does anyone know about that or have you ever met a manipulator that does that? Something that manipulators like to do is they like to control your memory and twist your memories around and like get in 
your head like that and be like, oh no, that's not what happened. This is what happened. And implement false memories in your head as a way to like psychologically control you. Ed seems like the kind of person that does that because right away we can see that he's a pathological liar. Your breath was not taken away when she walked into the room. Instead, you were disgusted. You looked away and you said, oh my God. And you were very upset that she walked. So don't try to romanticize it and say that, oh, the love of my life walked in the room and I haven't seen her in so long and she takes my breath away every time. You're a liar. Screwed because I'm in love. Okay. That's a good thing, actually. Did you guys see the way that Liz's face lit up when Ed said that? Like, did she honestly believe that? Was that that easy to control? This girl has no hope. Honestly, she has no hope in love. If she's this easy to manipulate, she's fucked. I feel like we all got dumber after this tell-all watching Big Ed's segment. And after the tell-all was finally finished, he spoke with Liz and they actually left together. But before he did so, he talked to the producers and he said that having sex with Liz probably isn't the best idea. And then the producer asked him, well, is that gonna stop you, Ed? And he said, no, probably not with a big grin on his face. So at the end of the day, this just shows, ladies and gentlemen, that it is all about sex for Big Ed. Clap it up for Big Ed. Once a sex tourist, always a sex tourist. Whether it's abroad or whether it's domestically in the United States, no girl is safe from this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a moment you've all been waiting for. There was a phone conversation leak between Big Ed and Liz. Let's play it right now. It's very disturbing and we really get to see more insight into what this guy is like in real life when the cameras are off. So let's go ahead and play it. I'll always love you but I can't be with you. Are you, can't. are you done? Because I've been sitting around the corner from your house from the second I clocked out. I don't give a fuck, Liz. You're fucked up. How am I fucked up? Are you going to listen to me or are you going to take over are this you whole? Even... Fuck you, dude. You're fucked up. Stop you speaking to, to me like this, Ed. Offer... Stop. For you to even offer to give a coworker a home, a ride home to El Cajon, what the fuck is wrong with you? Stop. Stop belittling me! I don't deserve to stop! Stop! You are fucked up in the head. I called you and asked you, and you I said. Don't give a then fuck why you. did you say yes? Fuck you. Why did fuck you say you. okay? Fuck you. Fuck you. You are fucked up in the head. For you to even ask me to give a coworker a home. I did the. Can you let me speak? Ask your boyfriend. What, what I was going to say, if I would have said no, you would have freaked out. Oh, you're jealous or whatever. But what right do you have to ask me? What right do you have, have to get back together with me and go to clubs in Vegas? I haven't given you any shit, Ed. Please, I called please, you and please, you don't please, let me speak. Please. You don't let me speak. Liz, you're fucking stupid. I'm... You're coming to me with big... Well, you were. I don't care, Ed. I don't care about that. I don't give you shit. I'm so patient with you. I am patient no, with no, you. No, you're not. No, you're not. Liz. Really? No, you're I'm not patient. No, you're I've been sitting... I've been sitting outside... Outside... Watching you blow up my phone. I've been sitting around the corner from your house from the second I clocked out because I can't go for a run because you keep blowing up my phone because I can't listen to my music. I've been sitting around the corner of the word fuck over and over and over again. I deserve a minute to speak. Why can't you give me that minute? Or are you just going to call me because I'm stupid? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stop with the fucking emotions and prove your point. Emo go ahead. It was a stupid decision on your part. It was a stupid question. You fucking should have never asked me that. It was disrespectful to your boyfriend. I'm sorry. And it, the fact that you don't see that makes you look stupid. <laughs> you don't even let me talk. You just told me to talk and you just took it over again and called me stupid again. Because you're making stupid mistakes and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of your dumb mistakes. I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of apologizing to you. I'm not going to do it anymore. I didn't ask you to apologize. I'm trying to speak. I'm trying to speak to you. Not once have I asked for an apology. I've asked you to let me speak. Go ahead. Are you sure? What do you have to say? What do you have to say? Go ahead. I'm going to say. You could have approached it to me in a better manner, Ed. You had two hours to tell me how you felt. I called you to ask for permission and you said, okay, you told me I'm such a good person and I have a kind heart for doing that. The fact that I even reached out to you, you could have said something, Ed. I 
re you were the first person I asked you. I asked you whether you're going to tell me it's stupid or not for even coming to you for that question. I don't have anything to hide. I came to you. I asked. I'm not done. I came to you. You said, okay, okay. For two hours, you could have said something to me. Then you, you face. Okay I'm not that? done talking. Okay I'm not that? done talking. Do you think I was okay with that? To be okay with my girlfriend. You're not going to let me finish talking, are you? No, I'm not. Because for you to think it was okay for you to drive a stranger to fucking El Cajon. Do you think it's okay the way that you're on. speaking to me right now? Do you yeah. think that... Stop. Answer the question. Do you think that it's okay the way that you were speaking to me right now? Yes, I do. Because of your dumb... What else can I say other than if you're between the ages of 18 and 30, you need to be on your guard because there's guys like Big Ed out there and that makes me big sad and it actually makes me want to exterminate all men. So on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Comment below, subscribe, let your friend, let your friend. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.